Hello, everybody. Welcome to Intro to Programming and Problem Solving for the Fall 2020 Quarter. Uh, my name is Bruce Elgort, and I'm going to be your instructor for this class. Uh, I've been teaching at Clark. The, the slide is actually a little out of date. Uh, I'm just about to wrap up eight years of teaching here. Uh, in the computer technology department. Um, and on the right, you can see kind of all the things I've done throughout my career. I work at Clark College now. Uh, I started a software company called El Guji Software, where we created a product. I would say it's like Facebook, but more for companies. And this was back in 2007, kind of around the same time Facebook began. Uh, I also have done some work for lynda.com, which is owned by Microsoft now. I started an open source organization for IBM called OpenNTF. Uh, I first started working at a college in New York at a company called Underwriters Laboratories. Uh, and then I came out here to the West Coast in 1994 to help open UL, Underwriters Lab Underwriter Laboratories West Coast office. Uh, in 1998, I moved and worked, uh, went to go work for Sharp over in Camus. Uh, I'm recognized by IBM uh, as an IBM champion. I hold uh, 15 different Microsoft certifications, and I'm also recognized by Amazon's AWS Educate as a cloud ambassador. A lot of buzzwords in there, but that's kind of my career wrapped up. On the personal side, I wanted to be a rock star. In fact, the guy, if you look at the picture on the left-hand side, there's a lady, that's my wife, Gail, and then there's a guy with a wine bottle, and that's me, and uh, my best friend uh, is the guitar player for Alice Cooper. Uh, and in the middle, you can see Tommy. His name is Tommy Hendrickson. He, uh, he's there with Johnny Depp. That's me on the right, uh, sitting behind the drums of Alice Cooper's drummer, Glenn Sobel's drum kit. And there at the bottom is Alice Cooper, my wife, my daughter, and my niece. So I, uh, I didn't become a rock star, but I did become uh, an electrical engineer. I went to college uh, in, at somewhere, well, not at somewhere, but at Stevens Institute of Technology. It was, it's a small private engineering school right across from Manhattan, as you can see in that uh, picture there. Um, spent four years there, and I earned a Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering. Graduated in 1985, so that was kind of a while ago. Um, and then, uh, in the lower right, I got my master's while I started working for underwriters at uh, New York University's Polytechnic School for Engineering. That's me when I had hair working on an IBM PC, and I believe that's probably 1986 or so. And on the left, there's me teaching a course about PCs back, uh, back uh, I don't know, back when I uh, had hair as well. Um, um, at underwriters. So that's that. Um, legally blind. I have uh, really poor vision. I don't drive a car, uh, at least legally. No, I'm just joking there. Uh, again, you can see what I have, what kind of vision I have in my left eye and right eye. And I have little to no peripheral vision, and I tend to bump into a lot of things. So um, my life at Clark, I teach 13 different uh, courses in web development. I teach students how to create things uh, accessible to everyone. There's not much of the uh, topic of accessibility as it pertains to what we are going to learn in this class, but uh, just uh, if you're in my HTML or other web kind of development classes, I do have a large focus on it. Uh, I teach a class in artificial intelligence and robotics. Um, I was fortunate enough to receive the Exceptional Faculty Award uh, twice at Clark, uh, which is the highest honor that the college awards to its faculty. And I'm part of the team that created Clark's universal design policy. That has to do with accessibility, uh, making sure that what we do at Clark is available to uh, you know, all people, regardless of their um, you know, disabilities, uh, and things like that. 
And I just started what's called a tenure track position. So I'm no longer considered full-time temporary. I'm on this three-year track uh, to become a, like a permanent member of the faculty. Um, this class, just so you know, has two sections, and you'll hear me refer to the remote section of this class and the online section of this class. Let's talk about the online one first. If you are in section 11713, so if you look in CTC link uh, and you're in that section, that's the online section. That means you're on your own. You can like go through the material. You don't have to attend classes and you're actually not totally on your own. But the remote section, which is 11753, does get to meet on Zoom. Uh, once a week for almost two hours on Mondays from 10 to 11.50 a.m., okay? Uh, again, the remote section, every class gets recorded, uh, and I make it available in Canvas. Again, it's only made available to the remote uh, section. Uh, each class is transcribed, and what's really cool about that is you can actually go into Canvas uh, and that's actually a video too on it. And you can search for a term or terms and it will show you all the places in a particular class or lecture, whatever, where that was mentioned. You click on it and boom, you're taken to that part in the lecture. Uh, each uh, module, I'll have the recordings, again, only for the remote section. And if you want to switch from the online section to the remote section, um, you can, there's, there's some room. If you want to go from the remote to the online section, at the time I recorded this video, there was two uh, slots available in the online section, all right? Uh, I hold office hours uh, on Fridays and Sundays from 9 to 10 a.m. I'll answer anything uh, that you want me to go over, whether it's uh, quiz stuff or problem sets or any of that kind of fun stuff. If you can't make the scheduled Zoom hours and you need some help, just let me know. We'll, we'll, we'll figure something out. Uh, and if you plan on joining office hours, let me know ahead of time. So uh, I, can, uh, I can make sure I'm prepared uh, and I can help you with uh, you know, the things that you need help with. Uh, and then if you need to join the office hours, there is a link in Canvas in the left navigation called Zoom Room. That's the link you want to use. All right. The textbook for this class is called Python Programming, an Introduction to Computer Science, third edition, third edition. The author's name is John Zelly. I think it's actually pronounced Zell, but I pronounce it Zelly. It's available from the Clark Bookstore and other booksellers. Uh, it's available in digital and hard copy versions, all right? Uh, let's talk about the assignments and quizzes in this class. Um, there's a syllabus quiz due Thursday, September 24th. Uh, you must score 100%. That is Thursday. Okay, that's Thursday, September 24th. Uh, and then there is a Python development workflow setup. And I guess it's the first time I'm saying Python, but Python is the language we're going to use. And in order to do your work for this class, you're going to need to go through uh, and download, set up, configure some software. Now, you really need to follow my instructions in Canvas uh, to get this right. Um, yeah, so just do that. Uh, I'm also going to require you to do a Slack introduction. So there is an assignment inside of Canvas, and it's due Wednesday, the first, like the third day of class. And the reason why I have like the syllabus quiz and the Slack introduction is to make sure that you are engaged in the class because what happens is uh, there are some students who sign up for classes and never do anything and I need to make sure that I drop and remove those students from the class by Friday. So that's why we, that's why I made things due on Wednesday and Thursday. There's another thing that I have called guided explorations, and I forgot to mention the percentages of the grade here. You can read them yourself. Uh, the guided explorations are 15% of your final grade. And these are kind of uh, things that I give you as like kind of like tutorials that show you how to use various aspects of 
the Microsoft Visual Studio Code software that you'll be using. Again, Python is free, Visual Studio Code is free. All the components, software components you'll be using for this class are free. I also have you fill out what I call weekly exit slips. And these are kind of like uh, little um, notes to me or slips, whatever, that let you tell me, you know, oh, what's resonating with you, what's not resonating with you, what topics were covered and stuff like that. And it helps me provide you with a better experience on learning, you know, all the things we need to learn in this class. The bulk of the work is these problem sets where 43% uh, of your grade, right, they're due on Mondays. Uh, I don't want to totally trash everyone's weekends with, you know, homework and stuff like that. A lot of things are due on Mondays. Um, you're all, you know, you're all adults. You can figure out, you know, how to, uh, you know, uh, again, the first week, things are going to be due, you know, here and there. But after that, pretty much everything is probably going to be due on Sunday or Monday. Okay. So the problem sets are like programming problems, like, uh, we need to do this, and you're going to need to write program code to be able to do it, all right? Uh, next slide here, weekly learning guide quizzes. So these are actually due on Sundays. And what these learning guide quizzes are, um, are you go through it, and I tell you where the answer is, all right? Or where to look, or what tool to use to, to get the answer. And none of my quizzes have time limits. So... What you want to do is at the beginning of a week, a module, is open that up and keep it open. Like, not keep it open, just don't submit it. So that's kind of a thing I, I've done for a long time now, is you open it, you start it, you can close your browser, you can go have coffee, tea, you know, Coca-Cola, whatever, come back a few days later and pick up. Uh, and then eventually, at the end of the week, submit that, that quiz, right? Uh, final exam, 10% of your final grade, that's d d done during finals week. It's just a, uh, you know, open book, open internet, kind of like the all the other quizzes are in this class. And then uh, if you want to take this Microsoft MTA exam, Microsoft Technology Associate, um, it's, uh, it's a Microsoft certification. And, you know, most of the time I can get 90% or greater of the students in the class um, passing it. So that's a, that's a pretty good thing. And a lot of, if not most students, opt to take it. Copying code. All right. This is, you know, boo. So a lot of, there's a lot of code on the internet. I think you all know that. Um, and, you know, Google's your friend, right? But you're going to find that most of the work in this class you're not going to find on, on Google, okay? And I'll know if you find it on Google because it will probably be um, flagged by something I have that tells me exactly where you got that code. So don't copy code. You know, ask me questions. I'm here to help you. Uh, and the other thing, as you'll learn in this class, is code is half the, half the, the work. Being able to like tell me in what we call comments in Python code what you think the program should do, that's that's worth a lot. All right. Um, let's see. And I have to say, if you do get caught copying and it happens every single quarter, you get a zero for the first assignment that you you know do it on. If you do it again, you get an F in the, the class and you know we say goodbye, all right? So don't do that, all right? I'm here to help you. I'm very accessible, uh, just so you know. And uh, Slack, yeah. So I sent out invites to all of you uh, to join the various Slack group, whether it's the online section Slack group or the remote, uh, remote section Slack group. I use it in all my classes. I've been using it for years. It connects you to me 24 hours a day. It allows us to share code, pictures uh, of like, you know, screenshots and stuff like that. It's kind of like uh, Discord for, for you gamers out there, right? Or Microsoft Teams, right? Uh, and I monitor Slack constantly for your questions. Uh, and there is, in fact, here we go, uh, announcements in Slack there are various channels where you know you put various things in the announcements channel anytime i make an announcement through canvas it'll show up in slack as well 
The general channel, it, general channel is for general discussions about the class. Code from class, so if I, um, for the remote section only, uh, if I do some work in class, I'll put it there as well so you have access to the code. Introductions, that's where that assignment that's due on Wednesday of the first week of class, that's where you're going to answer a few questions, just so you know. Uh, the questions channel is for questions, right? So we're not going to clutter the other channels up in like general announcements, code from class, introductions with questions that you may have. And all questions are fair game, you know. Uh, and then random. Uh, use that to share like articles you find or, uh, I don't know, humorous things about coding. You know, we get that a lot. Uh, just, you know, use Slack as a tool um, to... to uh, to, uh, to, to collaborate and communicate. All right, let's see. Slack tips, sharing Python code. I'm gonna show you how to do this in a second. Uh, Slack reactions, I'll show you that. And then threaded replies, okay? So I think those are all my slides. Oh, no. So let me just show you that for a minute here, all right? So I'm gonna bring up Slack. I'm gonna have to blur out some uh, names and such, okay? So let me just make this full screen. So all, on the left here, all the different Slack groups I belong to. And you can see here that um, this person, right? Well, actually, no one's really done anything yet, but here's something I made, uh, a post I made. And you can see uh, it says, hi, everyone, when you join Slack, blah, 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 right? And you can see, see when I hover my mouse over, if you look on the right side here, look, see what happens? You get a check mark, googly eyes, high five, and then there's this add reaction. See this add reaction? And here's where you could just, you know, find a reaction and it adds it right here. So if you agree with someone or you're like, you know, what the heck, you know, you can add a reaction there. All right. So that's what Slack reactions are. Uh, they're uh, use them. Okay. Um, the next thing is threaded replies. So instead of just having this long contiguous discussion, right? Or maybe someone, let me go to questions here, okay? So now I'm in questions and I'm going to type, uh, this is a test question. Please ignore. What? Well, please ignore it, okay? And there it is. There's my question. Now, if you saw this and you wanted to reply, just don't start typing right below it here. What I want you to do is go over here right on the right, and it says reply in thread. Because what's going to happen now is going to say, I can help you, right? So I'll hit this green thing here, right? And boom, you can see now that we have replies. So we're, they're all connected. Here is my original post, and here is um, the, the reply, the, 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 the response, okay? Now, let's say you wanted to respond here with some code, some Python code, right? So you see this little lightning bolt right here? That's going to allow me to bring up this pop-up menu here that says create a code or text snippet. So I'm going to click there, and now I'm going to create some Python code. Just pretend you know what this is right now. In fact, what you need to do here is set the type here to Python, Python. And now you can see we got some color coding going on. Uh, hello world, right? And then I'll call this main here, okay? And now I can post this, this snippet into right here, right? And you can see that the code, including what we call syntax highlighting and the line numbers is showing right there. So that's how you share code. You see that? That's how you share code. You just don't paste in code here because it won't show up uh, the way it does here, all nicely formatted. The other thing you could do too is let's say you have, um, let me launch Visual Studio Code here. Uh, Visual Studio Code. Okay, here's Visual Studio Code. This is an old assignment, right? And let's say um, it's from Module 5. Oh, let me do this. Let's say you want to just share this screenshot, right? You can take a screenshot like I just did here. And then uh, in Slack, let me go to Slack. 
you can do this. You click on the paperclip and you say your computer. Okay, and now I'm going to find that screenshot that I just made, which is right. Uh, is this it? No, that's the error quality. Um, there's an update for uh, what do you call it? Visual Studio Code. Of course, there is. I think it's on my desktop. Hold on. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so now watch this. I can hit, I can type something in here. Here's the screenshot, and I can do this. And look, so now it shows, you know, right, right up, right up there. This is um, just Slack trying to give me some help here. I don't need your help, Slack. Let me just get rid of that delete message. Yes, get rid of it. All right. So you see how we have this thread here. It's got two, um, three replies. So Bruce asked a question, and then Bruce said, "Can I help you?" And then Bruce, the other Bruce, gave some code, and maybe there's a screenshot too, right? All right, so I'm going to delete this stuff so the people who are in this this group, this is the online group, don't uh, don't uh, get confused here. So for the people who did see this stuff happening, now you'll be able to know what it was. All right, so that's that, and then yeah, so I'm just going to delete. Uh, yeah, there it goes. Okay, so I deleted everything, and you can delete if you mess up. Yeah, feel free to delete something, but. Um, I wouldn't delete stuff if someone helped you and helped answer your questions because other people will be able to learn from it. All right, so that's it. We did reactions, we did threaded replies, and we did code snippets, all right? So uh, let's see. Yeah, we just did those. Okay, here we go. So coding tools. So in module one in Canvas, you're going to be asked to install the Python language. And again, there's videos and ex, uh, explicit directions on how to do this. And it's really critical that you follow the instructions. The next thing is Microsoft Visual Studio Code. Again, all these things are free. Uh, it's what you're going to be using to write code. Uh, uh, and you saw me use it right here, right? This this thing right here. This is Visual Studio Code, okay? Um, let's see, what else? Uh, you're going to be asked to install what are called extensions for Visual Studio Code. Those add functionality to VS Code. VS Code is Visual Studio Code. You're going to be asked to install something called Git. Uh, and Git's actually not, I don't know if we do it in Module 1 or 2. You're going to have to sign up. Uh, for a free GitHub account. GitHub is a service uh, owned by now by Microsoft that allows you to uh, share your code and post code, and we're going to be using that a lot. And then there's another thing called GitHub Classroom, and that's how eventually, I think it's in week three, module three, how you're going to be getting your assignments and submitting them, all right? So let's see. Uh, how to attack this class? I get asked this question all the time. And, you know, this is not a memorization class, all right? That, that's number one. Um, you need to browse through the items listed in the, in the module on Canvas. That's always something that, that I do. I take, I take classes, too. Read the module introduction and download the slide decks that, that are there. Opening, open the learning guide quiz and written quizzes. Remember, uh, I said that you can keep them open for as long as you need. And as you like, like read through them, maybe you want to print them out or, or do whatever. And anytime uh, you see something that's an answer to one of the questions, go, go fill it out. Just don't submit it until the end of the uh, end of the week, right? Or, or until you're done. Read the chapters in the textbook and use the slides um, to supplement the key points. Watch the videos in the module, code along with them. Just don't watch me do it, right? And I think I have 70 instructional videos for the entire course. Um, yeah, and there are something called skill building exercises. Don't simply read the solutions. These do not need to be turned in, but I highly suggest that you, you code them because that's how you're gonna learn this stuff. Uh, do the review questions in the textbook. The answers can be found in Canvas. And ask questions on the Slack questions channel. I'll be sure to help you, and I know a lot of you will help one another. So is that up? Oh, weekly schedule, I thought. 
I was done with the slides. So, you know, I'm not going to go through this. This information is in Canvas. There's a lot of material to cover. Um, and we do have that one week during Thanksgiving. And I, I don't think I give you too much work to do during that week. So you can see the various chapters. We almost make it through the entire textbook over the 11 week quarter. And uh, yeah, so, uh, and then the final exam is the finals week. And then that Microsoft exam is during week 11, just so you know. Uh, and that's all I have. So let me take you through Canvas and I apologize for the lengthy video, but I just wanna make sure that you, you just hear all this information from me. All right, so I'm looking at Canvas, and my Canvas is going to look a little bit different than your Canvas. Just know that, all right? So I'm going to take you through the left-hand side here. The things that show here with the, you know, the, uh, I guess it's an eyeball, yeah, with a, with a line through it, those are things that you won't see, all right? Uh, except for announcements. When they're there, they'll show. So right here, right here, where it says Recent Announcements, Anytime I make an announcement, like um, here's a video I prepared that's going to help you with this assignment, or oh my gosh, it's snowed out. There's not going to be any class this day. Or, I don't know, whatever it may be. This is you're going to see several of them here, and if you click on announcements here, you'll be brought to the view of all the announcements. This is just going to show three announcements right here. Um, the Zoom room, that's that link you're going to click on if you're in the remote section or you need to get extra help during office hours. So you'll click on that link there. Grades, that's going to be your grades uh, in you know on the various quizzes, assignments, all that other kind of stuff. Library, that is the Clark Library. Modules, that's kind of this view right here if I click on it. It just doesn't show the announcements. So that's what that is right there. Uh, and I'll go through this more. Panopto recordings. So I'll record for the remote session, the class recordings. And you'll find them in Canvas, but you'll, you'll also find them here. Search, just so you know that up here in the upper right, right up here, you can like search. I don't know if you know this for like various words uh, in the course material. So. Don't uh, be shy, use that. Slack group online, Slack group remote. Um, so if you're in the online section, you click on this link. If you're in the remote section, you click on this link. But I highly advise, and this covered in module zero, that you install the Slack software on your computer. Just don't use the, the browser-based versions of these uh, because I keep it running all the time. See this little icon down here on uh, on the Mac here? Same thing on the PC kind of, right? It's always there. And if I see like a little red badge, that means one of you needs help, right? Uh, it's just good to have running all the time. Uh, student services, that stuff for you as students, you can click on that. It takes you to a page on the Clark website. The syllabus, right, that's going to be, uh, that's uh, like all the things that you need to know about this class, okay? And there's all these things here, you're, you're not going to, um, you're not going to have access to them. And not all of them are being used, just so you know. I have them all in here. You're not going to see them. I get to see them. Uh, discussions, I need to take, uh, you don't see that because it, I don't use discussions in this class. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. So let me take you to modules. And let me show you how I format my stuff in Canvas. So module zero, this is like all the information you need to read. It talks about the class. It talks about using Canvas. It talks about uh, the syllabus, the textbook, you know, just a office hours, a whole bunch of things. But you need to go through it and you need to like read each one of these things here, all right? And then there are three assignments. In fact, I talked about them in those slides earlier. This I put them in module zero just to, to make module one look a little less uh, cluttered. But introduce yourself on Slack, sign up for a GitHub account, and syllabus quiz, okay? There you go. That Those are where they are. Now, this thing here, Instructional Video Library, this contains all of the videos for this class. 
And I put it here, not that I want you to go through and do all these videos in order. Sometimes, instead of hunting and pecking through Canvas to find a certain video, you may just look at these titles here and you know open up that video and watch it. So it's not like you go to this module, Instructional Video Library, and start watching all the videos in order. What I did is I extracted all the various videos from Module 1, and I grouped them together. Same thing with Module 2 and stuff like that, all right? So Module 1. All these modules follow the same format. In front of each item in a module, I put a like a verb, read, watch, uh, let's see, well, complete, right? So it should help you out a little bit. But each module is going to have an introduction. I'll also put a like link to uh, just all the videos for that particular uh, you know module in there for those people who like just to have quick access to the videos. Um, the Zoom stuff for the remote section, you'll have this lit up in your Canvas shell. Just so you know, you'll be able to go back and watch the uh, class recording. And then there are these units, and un under underneath, I can't talk today, underneath each unit, right, you'll have one or more things to do, right? Mostly read and watch, just so you know. Uh, read, watch. Then here are those skill building exercises, right? These are the exercises that you do not need to turn in, but you should do them. They're like little problems and theoretical things. Um, here are the review question answers from the textbook, and you may see these uh, a lot uh, in quizzes and things like that. Here is the assignment for the Python development uh, workflow. If you click on that, right, you can see I provide detailed instructions and screenshots and, you know, things like that. That'll help you out. Uh, and then you have the, let's say, let me go back here takes a second. So you have the assignments and then quizzes, right? I spoke of the learning guide quizzes. These are the ones where I tell you where to go find the answer and the actual module quiz. And they have different due dates. One is due Sunday, the other is due Monday. And uh, again, open these up at the start of the module. Look through them, right? And I don't require you to submit them until you're done, okay? So yeah, so that's it. And each module is going to be like formed the same way, okay? So I hope this, this format works for you. And uh, yeah, uh, let's see. Uh, well, that's all I think I have uh, for now. And uh, like I said, use Slack to communicate with me and with one another. Uh, use Canvas. I have a ton of videos. If there is like a video, like a topic that you're not finding that I, I have, which says right here with this, this face, not finding a video on a topic, I, I can publish videos in no time. Okay. If you need help with something that you spend an hour on, I bet you that in three to four minutes, I could create uh, an instructional video that'll not only help you, but will help others just ask. I, I got you covered. All right. So that's all I have. Uh, welcome to CTAC 121 remote section. I look forward to meeting y'all on Monday, September 21st. And online people, I'll catch you on Slack uh, or on, you know, uh, extra help or a one-on-one -on -one Zoom call. And uh, have a really good quarter. A lot of students really find this course rewarding. Again, it's a lot to cover. It's not memorization, but I will be there to uh, do my best to ensure your success. Have a great day, and thanks for watching.